All right, here we go. Algebra one, working with sets. Okay, our essential question, how can you write sets and identify subsets? Okay, this is section three, five in the book. Uh, it's kind of a change of pace from what we've been doing. Um, make an emphasis on it here, uh, and we'll look at three, eight, which is more sets, but we'll do some more work with this later. Because uh, as it turns out last year, there was quite a bit of this stuff on the uh, end of course exam. So this won't be the, the last time you see it. It may be the first time you've seen it, but we'll do more of it. Okay, what's roster form? Roster form is any time you list out your, uh, your the, whatever's in, whatever elements are in your set, you list them out in a, in a set notation. Okay, you can see by the set brackets here. And whether it's numbers or words or uh, things, it could be a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a dollar, whatever it happens to be, you list them out in a set notation form. Set builder notation. This is kind of a shorthand way of writing this. This, as you can see, are all even numbers, 2468, dot, 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 and so on. Another way of writing it, and this is how you would say it right underneath here, we're talking about all x, such that, that's what that line stands for, x is a multiple of 2. Okay, that's another way of writing out that roster form. All x, such that x is a multiple of 2. Okay? Let's look at an example. Let's say we have set T, and it's a set of natural numbers less than 6. So in roster notation, we know natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. No fractions, no decimals. So T would be 1 through 5. If you wrote it in set notation, it would be we're talking about all X's such that X is a natural number. X is less than 6. You're saying the same thing two different ways. Okay? Roster notation, set notation. All right, make sure you get that down. All right, let's look at some other vocabulary here with sets. We talk about the empty set, okay? It, we use the symbol of set brackets with nothing in it or a circle with a line through it. That means that, or the null set, that means there's no elements, okay? There's, there's not one, two, three, four, five, six, there, there's nothing, okay? It's empty, it's an empty set. Subsets, okay? List the subsets of set 3, 4, 5. Do this with an example, it'd be a little better. What you're going to do is list all the possible combinations of 3, 4, 5. You could get the empty set, whichever way you want to write it. You could get just 3, or just 4, or just 5 by itself. You could pair up 3, 4, 4, 5, or 3, 5, or you can get the whole thing. Okay? Those are all the combinations or subsets that you could get from a set containing points three, four, and five. The universal set, okay? Uh, for us in here so far in math, we talk about real numbers. Any of our answers could be any real number, okay? That would be like a universal set. It's the largest set that you can choose from, all right? Uh, the complement of a set is a set of all elements in the universal set that are not in the set. Let me, let's take a look at this as an example. Okay, in a diagram form, it would look like this. Everything in the box is part of the universal set. If we, when we write a circle in here, that would be set A, then everything not in A is the complement of A. Notice it's A with that little slash up there at the top. Okay, that would be the complement. An example might look like this. Maybe the universal set is a set of all chess pieces. You got your pawns, uh, your rooks, your knights, your bishops, your king, your queen, uh, set A might be all the pieces that move side to side. Well, that could be the rook, that could be your king, your queen, and then the complement of that would be the pieces that don't move side to side, like the knight, the bishop, and your pawns. Okay? So that's one way of looking at it. All the chess pieces are the universal, and then you can set up whatever you want set A to be, and then whatever's not in set A that's still in the universal set would be the complement. Okay? Uh, when you come in here tomorrow, we'll look at some examples of this, uh, do some book work, uh, and we'll look at some application of this. Uh, then we'll move into 3.8, where we talk about sets some more. Okay? We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.